scoundrel yet. Well, just let him try and cross the Loire. That's all. Citizeness, where do you think you are going? Search the cart. Search the cart? What do you want to search my cart for? Playing at soldiers, that's what. I saw you as I was coming down the street, sitting on your comfortable chair. I saw you. Anything there? Some good melons, Corporal. Where's your pass? Me pass? I'll put it. I'll put it up in my... I'm sure I'll put it up. Come on, where is it? <gasps> <laughs> He's too much for you, Corporal. Let that go, then. <laughs> I wish she was 50 years younger. Oh, Everybody that crosses this bridge has always showed a pass. Open the barrier. Corporal. Yes, Captain. Have you by any chance seen an old hag? Yes, Captain. An old hag in a cart full of melons? Yes, Captain. She's all right. I let her through. Dewhurst is one man short. Not one of our French friends, I hope. No, one of us. Gloucester. You may have been caught. My orders to all of you are that you're not to get caught. And I expect my orders to be obeyed. Yes, Percy. Fool, numbskull, idiot, your head will roll for this. But, but, but the old hag, sir. Who was she? The Scarlet Pimpernel. Open the barrier. <laughs> in England, madame. permit for England to visit his sister. If you remember, she married an English aristocrat. See that he's watched. Let him come in. I see that you have been speaking to the people, citizen Sargist. Perhaps you're not a very good speaker. Hmm? Oh, uh, I am a member of the National Assembly. 
Thank God there's still a government in force. Let me finish. Either you are not a very good speaker, or you do not say what the people want to hear. A few hundred people die, whatever it is. Thousands. Tens of thousands. Tens of thousands? Perhaps. You do understand, of course. Or do you? Please let me uh, explain for you. Steam must escape from the boiling pot. The fact that it raises up the lid and the pot overboils does not spoil the broth, does it? And we don't care about anything but that, do we? I have seen boiling pots too, but sometimes they put out their own fire. Armand Saint-Gist. Be careful. If you stand in the way of the people, nothing can save you. Nothing. If only we could... Here come the old guard. Here's that ass plate, Ned. Where? Here, among these other young asses. Well, if it isn't the old friend, Colonel Ramsbottom. How do, Ramsbottom? Winter bottom, sir. So I've written a poem. A masterpiece. Who, sir? You, sir? Me, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. It's all about this mysterious Pimpernel fellow. The Scarlet Pimpernel by Sir Percival Blakeney, Baronet. What? Well, that's just the title. They seek him here. They seek him there. Those Frenchies seek him everywhere. Is he in heaven? Or is he in... Well, that dim, elusive Pimpernel. Hmm. Not bad. Not bad, it's damn good. I'll have it written down, you can all learn it. Sink me. Half big income poops. Yeah. They're all unlike these fashionable puppies. What that young ass Blakeney needs is a year or two of hard campaigning, facing powder and shot. Undergoing privationness. Can't imagine Blakeney running into much danger. As to your remark, John, you were saying there weren't enough of us. There isn't a decent Englishman. Or Frenchman. Or Frenchman who wouldn't be proud to join us. We could be 500, 1,000 within a week. And within another week, every one of us would be a marked man and we wouldn't be able to save a single soul. Sir Percival Blakeney. Sir Percival Blakeney. Nigel, go and see what that is. No, mere force is no good against people who are neither cowards nor fools. The prince has arrived and is asking for you, Percy. And your tailor is still waiting. And you have the incredible impudence, man, to follow me in here with this outrageous piece of criminal negligence. I asked for another fitting. It's not my fault. It's a matter to me the complete indifference whose fault it is. Shh. Look at this, sir. I, sir? You, sir? No, sir. You see, Brinker, even Colonel Ramsbottom refuses to look at this outrage. Winterbottom, sir. Well, didn't I say Winterbottom? Ah. Oh, Brinker. Brinker. Well, you have four hours in which to put it right. Blakey, the prince. He's probably coming to murder you. Good morning. Oh, 
Please, gentlemen, please, no ceremony, I beg of you. Just a fellow member. <laughs> ah, Blakeney, I heard you had Brinker with you. What do you think of the new jacket he's made for me? Good man, very good. <laughs> well, Blakeney, your opinion, man. A anything wrong? The back is admirable. The front, fair. Fair. The collar, passable. Possible. But the sleeve, Brinker, the cuff. That's a person is the last word in cups. And so it should be, man. For there should never be another one like it. Oh, come, come, it is not so bad. You see, Sir Percy, His Royal Highness approves. My poor Brinker, His Royal Highness does nothing of the sort. He said it is not so bad. Now, there's nothing in all the world that's quite so bad as something that's not so bad. Isn't that right, Admiral? But Sir Percy... No, 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 Brinker, it's a crime. Worse, it's a blunder. And it's quite, quite fatal to my reputation. But why to your reputation? Because all of those that His Royal Highness is guided by my taste, sir. Yes. Yes, Brinker, Sir Percy is an expert. On jacket. And breeches, sir, and breeches. I'm a very wonder with the inexpressibles. Aren't I, Brinker? Up to a point. Oh, Zooms, man, don't be so cursed jealous. Look at that puny little sleeve. That miserable dish rag of lace. Sickness, like the lining hanging out. But that was only intended for a plain cup. Plain? It's as ugly as a parson's widow. Open up your sleeve, man. Let your ruffles take the air. Let them ripple, let them flow, so that when His Royal Highness takes snuff, it will be a swallow's flight. That's it. Come, Brinker, help me to undress. And while I'm in the steam room, you can do something about my ruffles. Uh, Danny Percy, you may be brainless, spineless, and useless, but uh, you do no clothes. <laughs> Odds fish, that's something now, isn't it, sir? Don't hang about, Tony. We cross over to France tonight. <laughs> Down now, Madame la Comtesse. Quickly. Don't be afraid, Madame. Please. Down.
play it again. Go. Grace, this refuge you allow us is very timely. My son, all over the world, the tide of new ideas is rising. It may overwhelm us, but this abbey of Mont Saint-Michel will stand as it has stood for 800 years, and the tide will fall again. Speaking of tide, when is high tide? Eight o'clock. Then this whole mount becomes an island. Do you see that coach? Yes, four of my friends are in it. Seymour, Fultz, Gloucester... Where that coach is driving, you can bring your ship in. All these miles of sands will be covered in half an hour. And where it is firm ground, it will be deep water and treacherous quicksands. I wish I could see inside that coach. Why? My friends are bringing my brother-in-law from Paris, if they're lucky. And if not? If not, then they will be three. crosses by the regular boat from Calais. Thank God he's still safe. Amen, and Godspeed tonight. What depth of water can I count on? Three fathoms. Two or three feet to spare. We'll just scrape over. You find it as amusing as chasing the fox? What is a ditch, more or less? But a wide one. All well, the more fun. Surely your life is not so dull, my son, that you want to throw it away. You are young, rich, happily married. Yes, that's true. Young, rich. Snuff, Your Grace? Oh, I wish that tide would come. Patience. When it comes, it comes fast. Very fast.
starboard side, Mr. England. Stand by your boat rope. Standing in for Dover. What orders? The Detournes to the Fisherman's Rest, the others to the inn in Folkestone. I'll stay here till you're all on shore. Tell Tony to expect me later. Expecting you since noon. I know. Yes, the tide was against us. Uh, supper will be served at once. At once. Uh, may I show you to your rooms now, my lady? Later, Jelly, later. One, Jelly. And here, Jelly. Ainsi nous voilà en Angleterre. Jelly? Yes, mademoiselle. A bit of uh, Angleterre. But all of it is at your service. Red wine? Oh, my friend, what can I say? You've been so kind to us. Only that you are glad to be in England, madam. Yes, indeed, we are glad to be in England. Yes. To His Majesty George III of England, God bless him for his hospitality to us all, poor exiles from France. King, the king, king. Oh, where is he, your leader? We must go to him at once. Well, thank you. I'm afraid that is impossible, madam. Impossible? Why? Because the Scarlet Pimpernel works in the dark. His identity is known under a solemn oath of secrecy only to his immediate followers. Uh, please. Uh, could you tell me where he is? Where? He is everywhere. He is here. Is it in flow? <laughs> yes, mademoiselle. A humble English wayside flower. And also the name chosen by our leader to hide his identity. Pray, allow me to present this to you as a souvenir. <laughs> it's a shame to fool her, Andrew. It's one of his tricks. He's got it up his sleeve. Uh. Allow me, Manzo. Take mine. Elle est toujours là. John, John, the baggage. Uh, Sally, candles in the best bedroom. And Sally, get the warming pan. Lady Blakeney's coach. Blakeney? Is he the man who married that French woman called Marguerite Saint Just? A detestable woman. Her brother's in the new regime. All the Saint Justs are for the revolution. I'm sorry. If she comes in here, I shall leave. Good evening, my friend. Betty, occupe toi. Oh, oh, madame. I'm staying the night. I'm expecting my brother, Monsieur Saint Just. Has he arrived, Robert? The baggage. It's all in order, Betty. Has lady. anyone come by the packet from France today? Some people have arrived from France, my lady, but I'm afraid. The assistant just is not with them. No doubt they have a message for me. Show me to them. And my husband, is he here? Sir Percy, my lady, he here? No, no, there is no one you can rely more upon than Sir Percy. He never is where he promises to be. Other people sometimes are, not my husband. And may I show your ladyship into the parlor? Sally, in the parlor. No, I detest your English funeral parlor. Show me the coffee room. But there's a party in the coffee room, my lady. Well, in my way, for which you gape like a goldfish, then dance about like a turkey with sore feet. Well, Sir Andrew, what are you doing in Dover? I thought you were in Brighton, Lady Blakeney. No, my friend. I'm from London by the Dover Road. Suppose he is meeting me here. I suppose from Bath. The prince is in Bath, is he not? My brother Armand was due to arrive from France. I find he is not. Madame de Tournay, well, since when have you been in England? Tell me. Oh, Suzanne. Suzanne, I forbid you to speak to that woman. We are no longer in France, madame. And we are now at liberty to choose our friends and enemies. Thank you. 
take care of the horses. We start before dawn. Welcome back, Sir Percy. Hi, Jerry, what news? Lord Dewhurst and his party have arrived. And my wife, I saw her coach. Her ladyship and the French lady are having words, Sir Percy, in the coffee room. Well, what does my brother-in-law say about that? He's not arrived yet. Not arrived? No message? Then I must send one. My room ready? The round suit and hurry. Where have we come from this time, Sir Percy? Her ladyship said Bath. Bath it is, then, not Brighton. Bath it is. I'm ration for you tonight. Careful, my boy, there are hawks about. Good evening, Sir Percy. Good evening, everybody. Chilly weather, what? Andrew? Tony? Come on, Chilly Belly, don't stand about. Bring punch for everybody. Evening, Nigel. Oh, hello, my dear. How oh, sheep as you all look. Anything wrong? Oh, nothing. An insult to your wife. You don't say. Who's the brave man who dared tackle you? Sir Blickney. My mother, the Comtesse de Tournay de Basserive, has offensive madame, who I see is your wife. What my mother does is right in my eyes, but I am ready to offer you the usual reparation between men of honor. Where did you learn to speak English? I fear you have not understand. I am ready to offer you the usual reparation among gentlemen. What the devil is that? My sword, monsieur. <laughs> what good would that sword be to me? A duel, monsieur! What's oh, fish? You're a bloodthirsty young ruffian. You want to go around making holes in people? Lord Tony, the vehicle might hurt Sir Percy. Yes, thank you, my dear. Sir Percy is in the right we can't. After all, it would be foolish for you to commence your career in England by provoking him to a duel. Duels are forbidden here, you know. Ah. Well? If monsieur is satisfied, I have no grief. Faith, folks. If that's a specimen of the goods they're exporting from France these days, my advice would be to drop a mid-channel, my friend. Drop a mid-channel. You forget, Percy, that you have imported one bundle of goods from France. Madam, I had the pick of the market. Captain Mills, whom are they saluting? The new French ambassador, just arrived from France. What name? Citizen Chauvelin. Lord Dewhurst has gone down to the harbour. The others all in bed? An hour ago. The two French ladies have my biggest room. And the little vicon? The smallest. But that young puppy only knew. <laughs> he didn't. I like to spare it. That's a good boy. If I had a son, I... So warn me, Jelly Demi. Warn me next time. The young fire eater nearly had me as full of holes as a damn pincushion. Good night, Sir Percy. Good night, Jerry. Oh, hello, my dear.
Couldn't you get off to sleep? Oh. Upon this whole, I'm exhausted. Just come back from Bath, been cured of the fatigue. Now I'm so fatigued by the cure, I think I'll have to go back to Bath again. The cure of the fatigue. Anything wrong? How can you ask that, Percy? Don't you know? No, my dear, if I didn't know, you must be happy. Zoons, I'd think you were unhappy. You're so sure that I'm happy? Well, curse me, my dear, you must be. You're the most courted woman in town. By whom? By everyone. Except by you. Oh, tell me, my dear, I'm... I'm your husband. Months after we were married, we were still happy. And then came this... Which heaven knows is none of my making. Can you honestly say that? Can you honestly deny that you've changed? So changed that I hardly know you. you you're never with me now. You're always away on some pretext or other. Well, we each have our own friends, and... Besides, you don't like horse racing and prize fighting. And you never come to Brighton with the Prince. To watch you and the Prince gambling and drinking all night. To talk of nothing but dogs and carts and horses. Well, can't you see the world is changing? Is it? In France, there's a revolution. In England, there's a Scarlet Pimpernel. Oh, no, no, my dear. There's no one more preoccupied with this Pimpernel fellow than I am. You? Yes. I'm, I'm working on a, on a poem about him. Good night, Percy. Oh, don't you want to hear it? It's good. Well, you're in luck, my dear. I, I've written a masterpiece. You can witness the first performance. The Scarlet Pimpernel by Sir Percival Blakeney, Baronet. Well, that's only the title. Come in, Tony. Your boots squeak. I always told you to go to a decent bootmaker. I heard your voice. I thought perhaps you had a visitor. I did have. But she left rather suddenly. Thank you. Don't you think you're carrying this a bit too far, Percy? What's happened between you two? Marriage, I suppose. Why? But you were in love with her. I've never seen a man so much in love with his wife. Do you remember the first family to go to the guillotine, the Saint Didiers? It was Marguerite who denounced them. I can't believe it. Did you ask her? I did, and she flashed back a yes just as sharp as the knife of the guillotine. I watched that execution. The Marquis, his wife, his son. And it was my wife who put them there. So that's why you ceased to love her. What a tragedy. Ceased? I'm desperately in love with her. That's the tragedy. Well, what is the news from the harbor? Chauvelin has left for London. Right. I'll give you a message for the League. You must get there before him. What is it? What's wrong? Wrong, my friend. Oh, Charlie. <laughs> Is it his lordship? Yes, it's Lord Tony, all right. Have you croaked him? No, just stroked him. Very gently. What about this horse? Find his keepings. Let's do him. Pockets first. He'll have nothing in his skies, except the cash. And I got that. I'll bet. Now, go through the lining of his coat. Then through his boots. Where's his tip for tap? And Monsieur says we've got to clean him proper.
Fine morning, your ladyship. And Rob, Percy, you I'm came a... straight here? Yes. How do you know you weren't followed? Oh, I know I'm a fool, but I'm not that big a fool. Did you see anyone or anything? Nothing. What did they get? Where did it happen? Just outside Dartford. I'm afraid they got your message, Percy. Hey. I was right, Baron. The Lord Tony Dewhurst is one of them. Invite me hunting Friday. I should be at cheese tonight. G. Who then is this G? G. Hunting. Emotion, the best society. When he disappears to France, hunting. Fishing. Oh, well. I have connections in society. The accredited agent of the French Republic to the court of St. James. receive His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales. My Lord, my Lady, Sir Percy and Lady Blakeney have not yet come. His Royal Highness will be livid if he is not the last to arrive. They were both playing Pharaoh when Brooks when I left. Who was winning? His Royal Highness. Thank you, yes. Highness, the Prince of Wales. Impudence. You're certain, my lady. May I ask your acceptance of a small present? Oh, curse me, I've forgotten it. You left it behind you, sir, uh, when you picked up my money. A perfume made specially for me in Paris. Your Royal Highness does me too much honor. Oh, no, not at all. It's called Virtue. I can't think why. Virtue, sir, is like a flower, most fragrant when it is crushed. Ah, Grenville. Your Royal Highness is very welcome. Uh, oh, my dear folks. <laughs> Your Royal Highness, may I present my party at the tournée? Le Vicor de Tournée? Mademoiselle de Tournée? <laughs> ah, lovely Blakeney. Capital, capital, capital. Well, now let's hear it again. Seek him here. They seek him there. Those Frenchies seek him everywhere. Is he in heaven? Is he in hell? That damn elusive Dimpernel.
continue. Your servant, madam. Come, Blakeney. I have a little tune for you. My dear man, you've gone mad. Your brother Armand is in Paris. Once before, citizeness, I have asked your help. To the point. I come to it. One of my men in Paris has been following Armand Saint Just. Oh. That is why I could not come to this country. He is not master of his own movements anymore. Well, I thought as he could not come, he would write. He has written. To whom? To your husband. A uh, foolish letter. I don't believe it. Why should he write to Percy? He would have written to me. Yeah, I thought that strange, too. What is in the letter? Oh, nothing. Just a careless, foolish letter explaining why I could not come. But there are one or two phrases that could send him to the guilty. Servant, Lady Blakeney. Will you do me a service? For you? For France. France is great. A small service for her may be too big for me. What is it? Find me. Who is the Scarlet Pimpernel? You are astonishing, Chauvelin. For if you did know who this Pimpernel is, you could do nothing to him. An Englishman. I will take my chance of that. We will send him to the guillotine first. And apologize for it. Afterwards. Find him for me. And you will have Armand's letter. Where is this letter? Safely locked up in the embassy. Show it to me. I will. One more thing. Watch the Lord Dewhurst for me and his friends. He is one of the keys which lead to the skull of Pimpernel. Loons! That name again? Oh, I protest. I've heard nothing else all day in my club. At the baths, at Tattersalls, and now here. Well, it's becoming a public nuisance. Oh, beg pardon, my dear. Do I intrude? Oh, no, no. Uh, Monsieur Chauvelin is an old acquaintance. We were talking of Paris. Of France. Paris? Oh, ho, ho. oh big pardon, my dear. Devilish clever race, the French missiles. You flatter us. It's a passing. How they can speak that extraordinary language of theirs defeats me. Or even the little children. Aye. You're very kind, sir. Oh, oh, oh you, you have the cleverest heads in the world. Only trouble is, you all go to pieces round the neck. Round the neck? Yes. Look at this thing. Oh, sink me, what a mess. Now, oh, if you really want to know how to tie a cravat, monsieur, I'll show you. Very interesting. Oh, mark you, it isn't easy. It takes all my brain. I'm sure it does, sir. Percy. Au revoir, Lady Blackney. Your servant, Sir Percy. Clever fella, but he got no earthly chance of catching the Pimpernel. What makes you think he wanted to catch him? Well, isn't that what he's here for? Didn't he tell you? No, why should he? Mark you, a fellow can't even tie his own cravat. It's not likely to put a noose around the Pimpernel's neck, now is he? Percy, do you think Andrew Fuchs might be the Scarlet Pimpernel? Andrew? Never. Well, the fellow couldn't hit a ball at Eton. Well, what's your interest in the Pimpernel? Oh, no more than any other woman's. We'd all like to know who he is. Oh, <laughs> so would your friend Chauvelin. What makes you say that? The way he tied his cravat. Oh, Percy, can you never rise above trivialities? You were a man once, a man a woman could turn to in trouble. Now I don't know how to begin. Wouldn't you begin by telling me what the trouble is? 
My brother is in danger. Armand? A letter of his, a rash, impetuous letter, has fallen into the hands of a fanatic. You know how much he means to me. Who told you this, Chauvelin? Could you not ask the prince to intervene? You have such influence at court. Have you seen this letter? Not yet. He keeps it locked at the embassy. Who was this letter addressed to? To you. To me? What confounded evidence. I never heard of such a thing. Did you tell him to give you the letter back? Oh, this. Madam, I pledge me word that Armand should be safe. Yeah, I'll speak to the prince. I'll promise him anything. I might even race with him to Brighton. I might even let him win. You know how much he'd like to beat me on the Brighton run. Yes, that's it. I'll race with the prince to Brighton, and, and then when he's beaten everyone in the field and he's really pleased with himself, then I'll ask him to use his influence for Armand. Oh, dry your tears, my dear. I never could bear to see a pretty woman cry. Armand shall be safe. <laughs> when Mercedes Peaches come down, teaching that drinking is I wait for the rest of the crowd. They always do best with a skin. But when you come down with your pen, for a slice of the scurvy religion, If anyone asks for me, cover up. I've got a little job to do. Pay on, Pay on the green, sir. Oh, it's preposterous. I've never seen anything like it. Where's Blakeney? He should be here to play his own hand. It's not fair. It's uh, quite in order, Your Highness. I'm playing fourth person. Nonsense. Anyway, there must be a time limit. Eh, pretty? I've no recollection of any such rule, sir. Well, it's a dash bad play, anyway. Always putting his money on the same two cards. First, it's always your highness. The queen to win, the knave to lose. Yes, what is it? I've got a bit of news to sell your ambassador. Get out! So rude. You tell him it's about a letter. A letter he got from Paris this morning. Not his own letter, neither. Who are you? Where are you from? Never you mind who I am. My own father never knew me, so why should you, eh, nosy? <laughs> the ambassador is out. Qu'est-ce que c'est? Qui est là? C'est un individu, citoyen baron. What do you want? The ambassador. You him? Perhaps. Let's have a look at you. Get out of it, you ain't even an attache. What do you expect from the ambassador? What are you selling? A secret? Worth uh, five guineas. Il sait quelque chose de la lettre qui est arrivée ce matin, citoyen baron. Come in. Oh, no. I know your lot. Up with the old knife, back of the neck, head in the bleeding basket, I know. Get out. What's it worth, six? Two. If it is important. All right, done. Come here. Last night, or rather tonight, I got it from Mungo John, who got it from Billy the Fake. Of course, Mungo's caught in Billy's sister. Get out and I'll do my Well, to cut a long story short, certain people offered Mungo 50 guineas to steal an important letter out of this very house. They knew where it was kept and what it was worth. Who are they? Or oh, that'll cost you another 10 guineas. <laughs> Get out.
Oh, tout est bien. OK. Monsieur Baron, les windows. Oh Dieu, la, la fenêtre est ouverte. Ah, l'air a l'air. Monsieur, vous êtes blessé. Fouillez le jardin. Lâchez les chiens. Fouillez le jardin. Allez, allez, vite, vite. Now, nobody knew about this letter, except us, except that Cockney and his friend. Oh, je suis blessé. Je suis blessé. And one other person. be of service to you, Lady Blakeney? Well, I'm bored with this stupid party, my friend, that's all. Uh, my husband tells me you are an excellent conjurer. Conjure my ill humor away, I beg of you. That would be the most excellent trick. Well, I'm just a poor amateur, Lady but Blakeney. But I... I think you shall. Oh, well, very well. Now, let me see. Uh, would you give me some uh, trinket? Pudding. Your ring. Now watch this very carefully, Lady Blakeney, because it's the quickness of the hand deceiving the eye. <laughs> <laughs> You're an amateur, Sir Andrew. You have it in your sleeve. Oh, a bidou. Lady Blakeney, I protest. Fine, Sir Andrew, fine. An affair of honor. An affair of honor. You're quite a conjurer, after all. You're not so bad yourself, Lady Blakeney. Now take me to the ballroom. I should like to dance. Your ladyship. I have something for you. Well, perhaps I've taken up too much of your time already, Sir Andrew. Here's somebody to relieve you. Marie. Return to Paris tomorrow. I shall see your brother myself. Perhaps uh, he knows more than you think. Perhaps he even knows who is the Pippinet. Now this letter empowers me to persuade him to talk. You know we have the means to do that. He will talk. Ah yes, terrible. But if you want to save him from the torture, you must find out what I want to know. And then leaves for France tomorrow. He will be in Dover at noon. He will be in Dover at noon. What's the hurry, Blakeney? An hour ago, you didn't like the idea of having breakfast in Brighton. Now you want it at dawn. Breakfast is at 11.30. And we start at 4. If I start at 4, I'll have breakfast in Brighton at 10. Now, don't boast. I don't like boasting, particularly about the London to Brighton run. I might make you as good as your word. What is your wager, sir? A thousand guineas that I make better time to Brighton than you any day, except Saturdays. Well, why any day? Why not today, this morning? And I'll wager 
5,000 guineas open field. Any takers? Damn. I'm with you, Coke. Four in hands, Bob. What, the not old likely family you open field, Blakeney? Nothing is barred. Why, damn you, I'll back my skew balls against the world if I had the money. You owe me 2,000. I'll take the other three. Done. 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 Well, I've heard nothing from you yet, sir. Oh, done. It's almost two o'clock. We start at dawn. Can, Can we, we come in on, on that? that? You act as one starter, Queensbury? Certainly. Uh, and you the other, Major Pretty? In what order do we start? Alphabetically, of course. Yes. No, no, no. May I suggest, sir, that we pick the names out of a hat? Fair oh, enough. Yes. Well, well, now, Dammy, I think it's most unfair. I offered to bet, so the least you can do is to let me start first. I hate swallowing other people's dust. Most unusual, Your Highness. Hey, pretty? I think Blakeney has the right to dictate conditions, sir. The hat it is. Names in the hat, gentlemen. Cook. Hardwick. Reesdale. Blakeney, and I've done yours. Oh, thank you, Your Highness. Trinney, confound you. <laughs> <laughs> Drawn third place. How soon can we outdistance the others? We'll be first in Brighton with five miles to spare. What is the betting on the Prince? Six to four against. And on us? No takers. We have to leave them all behind before we get to the Dover Road. <laughs> oh, my dear, are you still here? Shall I take you to your carriage? I must talk to you first. Oh, I'm yours to command, my dear, but may I remind you that the Prince is waiting and, and this race is of some importance to you and to Armour if this little French chap really has his letter. He has. I've seen it. When? Tonight. And... and what? Did you ask him for help? He promised me. He promised you your brother's life. What did you give him in exchange? What has happened to you, Percy? Why do you hate me? Why did you denounce the Marquis de Saint-Didier? So that's it. Why did you never ask me what the Marquis de Saint-Didier did to me? You never even knew him. No, I never even knew him. But I knew his son. I was only 17 when he asked me to marry him. His father heard of it and had me arrested. I was sent to Saint Lazare. Do you know what Saint Lazare is? Do you know the sort of women they send there? I would have killed myself, only. Only what? The revolution came. The ever glorious 14th of July, and I was free. I, I knew of the Saint Didier's relationship with Austria. I told about it to a friend. To a man I thought to be a friend. He denounced them, and the terror did the rest. Who was his friend? Was it Chauvelin? He promised you your brother's life. What price did you pay for it? A horrible price. Well? I betrayed the Scarlet Pimpernel. How? Huh. Well, Andrew had a scrap of paper in his cuff. I read it and told Chauvelin that the Pimpernel would leave for France tomorrow. That he would be in Dover at noon. And will he? I don't know. Oh, but Percy, through me, a good, a generous man might lose his life. Oh, Percy, what can I do? How can I warn him? Warn him? Against what? Against the danger if he goes back to France. Well, he's the kind of lunatic I take him to be. Your warnings aren't going to stop him. But he might be going to his death. That's all the fellow lives for. Besides, he, uh, he doesn't know that you're in love with him. I'm not in love with him. I admire his heroism, but I'm not in love with him. Oh, but you are. Oh. It's a dangerous game, my dear, falling in love with a phantom. For all you know, he might be a married man, deeply in love with his wife. Never. Why not? Would any man who was in love with his wife leave her continually to face death, would you? Oh, no, I, I don't think I would, my dear. What am I to do? What am I to do? 
have courage. Beautiful morning, eh, Leech? No sign of the others, eh? Out the Dover Road. Gentlemen, don't fuss. Don't fuss. What's wrong, Your Highness? Well, it's Blakeney. He's vanished into thin air. He can. You, boy. Who, oh, me? Speak properly to His Royal Highness. Have you seen a canary-colored coach? Bumpkin. Do you think he's ditched? Nay, not Blakeney. No, it's some cursed trick of his. Curse him. I'll lay a hundred guineas he's there, having breakfast before us. Uh, taken? Five hundred. I'll make it a thousand, and so will I. Is it a bet, Your Highness? All wagers are off. Madam and gentlemen, you may have my dust. To Brighton.
Turning. Where is he now? We gave up the race, my lady. Well, what time do you expect him home? I couldn't say, my lady. He told me to say he's gone hunting. With Sir Andrew Fuchs. Pigeon, my lady. Where is my husband? In France, my lady. He is in the greatest danger. Chauvelin knows he is the Scarlet Pimpernel and has followed him to France. Indeed, my lady, that might be dangerous for Monsieur Chauvelin. Where is Andrew? With him. Lord Anthony? In London. Lord Anthony? Where is the rendezvous? But do I look like a woman who wants to send her husband to his death? I want to find him, to warn him, or to die with him. I'll go with you. Oh, and the other members of the League? They've already you? left in the daydream. Why aren't you with them? Because I was known to Chauvelin. First, he ordered me to stay behind. This will be the first time any of us have ever disobeyed him. Do you know where Chauvelin is now? He left for France two hours ago. And the wind was with him. The Marquis de Saint-Cyr, when he was rescued, was last seen at Nantes. The Tournais were last seen at Angers. Here at Wayne, all roads meet, and the roads to Brittany are the roads to England. The Dora Calais route, they have given up for a time. Their rendezvous is somewhere here, in between Avranche and Saint Brieuc. Here at Wayne, we are astride the communications. How many men have you? A dozen citizens. But I have a regiment coming up from Tours. Republicans? The best citizen. Parisians. 
They must rest when they arrive. Hmm. I shall need them. Tonight. I'm glad they're from the city. These are country people I do not trust. They are always thinking of their families, the fat families, and the fishing, and the farms. What do they think of the revolution? Yes? Citizen Captain Merrier reporting. Oh. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh. All right. La, 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 la. Yes? Mon Dieu, it's you. How did you, how did you get here so quickly? So quickly? Oh, my word. I leave you at two, I ride, and Gaston Mary I can ride, to Rennes, and I find you here before me. Yes, I am here before you. And why have you left your prisoners? Hmm? <laughs> you are joking, citizen. Joking. Ah, but you ordered me to. When? Where? Oh, but you know, citizen, at tour. 36 hours ago. And what exactly did I order? To release the Comte de Tournay, Armand Saint-Just, and report you here at Rennes. It was not I who gave those orders. Not you, citizen? Not you? Oh, I saw you. I heard you. Close as I am now. Was I sitting at a table? But you know you were. Was the lamp shining in your face? Yes. That was the scab of Pimpanel. Pimpanel. Oh. oh, but I could have... Fool! Idiot! The Englishman! Englishman? What Englishman? The Englishman I arrested at Tour. He must be one of them. Then you have released him also? No, 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 no. I brought him here. Here. When? Put in the next room. Sir Andrew Fuchs. Captain Duroc. Send in the prisoner. And uh, this. Popinjay is your prisoner. What? Your sword. Andrew Fuchs. Uh, do, do you mind? Two small Fs. You cannot get out, so you'd better come in. Come in. So, Andrew Fuchs, I want you to understand. I know who he is. The, uh, your leader. Well, yes, Sir uh, Percy Blackney. I have a few soldiers with me now. Tonight I shall have a thousand. Not one enemy of the Republic shall escape. Not one. You understand? But you, you may return to England tomorrow, when you have told me everything. Everything. Otherwise, I'm terribly sorry, but too small X.
Passports. You'll have to see the officer. But we're English travelers, man. You can read. You'll have to see the officer. is your chance to save that thing. Go ahead. What is the barrier? There are two English travelers. Shoot them? No, 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 no. Tell Captain Dorak to let them proceed. Proceed. They will lead us to the Pimpernel. You have a good horse? Oh, the very, very best in France. We will follow them until our destination is clear and then arrest them, but not before. We pull back here. Citizen, you may safely trust oh. me. Monsieur Désir, can I procure something for you, my lord? Qu'est-ce qui se passe là? My dear Monsieur Chauvelin, forgive me, I must have started. <coughs> Try a little of this. Nasty, awkward stuff, though. Soup. A friend of mine once died. Well, he didn't die, he choked. <coughs> like you. Drinking soup. <coughs> I didn't know you were in holy orders. Nervous? <coughs> Forgive me, I... I'm deucey hungry. Are you expecting someone? <coughs> Not a lady, I trust, Mr. Le Curé. <laughs> I don't think the Holy Church would approve. Light the fires, Jerome. <laughs> Is that meant to be a signal? Those are the execution fires, Sir Passy, to uh, light you to the guillotine in the square. Oh, may I? Pardon. Thank you so much. Mm, not bad. English. I wager it never paid duty. Oh, no, no. I got it when I was in London. Little old London. Of course, I almost forgot you were in London. Try mine. No. Sir Percy Blakeney, I know uh, who you are and the reason that you are here. Why you should choose to honor me with a visit, I cannot imagine. <laughs> you forget. I cannot leave without Andrew. He's one of my best friends. Andrew Fuchs? Hello, Percy. Hello, Andrew. I'll have you out in a minute. Good. Oh, uh, yes. It is you forget, Sir Percy. I hold you here. And for the rest of you, there are the soldiers for you. One of the best regiments. Très bien. Nobody can help you. Not even your government. 
Now, what do you say? You seem to have thought of everything. Nothing is left to me now but to say... Congratulations. You're very kind, Sir Percy. Monsieur le curé, you're going to be defrocked. Hold it. I don't eat meat on Fridays. Pick a good horse for yourself and turn all the others loose. Come on, Sophie Alarm. It's eight o'clock and high tides at ten. Ready? Keep low and go hell for leather. Your horses are all over the landscape. Sister Shola! You had them? Ha! As you ordered. Ha! You did well to have come. Rendezvous. Rendezvous. Le Mont Saint Michel. Tell his grace we're all ready to leave. At your service. I suppose you really are you, and not me made up to look like you. Joke as much as you please, Sir Percy. This time, I have got you. A prophet, as well as a priest? I have sought you for a whole year. They seek him here, they seek him there. Your ingenuity, your energy, your audacity are so very... Very interesting? <laughs> and, of course, your humor. Quel drôle. But now, the little game is over. Because you hold all the trump cards? Ah, yes. Precisely. More trumps than you think. The abbot is my prisoner. All the stairs leading up here are occupied by the soldiers. A regiment is outside, don't. I have only to raise my voice. Oh. Yes, I see your point. But the night is black. The sea is mine. If I should reach the door, I make a dash. I don't make a dash. I don't need to because one of my friends might shoot you from behind. Hidden in that clock. <laughs> oh, come now, no one really hides in a clock. Besides, this whole mount is honeycombed with secret passages, which you don't know, and I do. Yeah. 
If you want to go, Sir Percy, you may go. But you will come back of your own accord. You overestimate the charm of your society. Ah. There is one other trump of which you know nothing. Down there, there is a woman under a lake. Marie Saint-Just has forfeited her life for aiding the enemies of the Republic. Now, Sir Percy, is the game over? Is this the last adventure of the Scarlet of Pimpinel? If I give up, what next? The firing party. In the cloisters. And Marguerite? Oh, she shall go free. But afterwards. I've never used this before, Chauvelin. I've never needed to. But I've always carried it with me just in case I should need to. My cards on the table. If you will promise to say nothing of this to my wife, and to put her and all the others on board my schooner for England, then I'll walk in front of your firing party. I accept. Duroc! Captain Duroc! Here is your prisoner! Send in the firing party after she is gone. Forgive me, Percy. Can you forgive me? Never. I would have died for you. My dear, I'm in no danger. Oh, Mr. Chauvelin and I understand each other. Captain Duroc, will you escort Lady Blakeney to the ship? Give this order to the sergeant in charge. Till death do us part, darling. is rising. Southwest. west A fair wind for England.
forgot my hat. Deucey good hat. Oh, don't look at me like that. <laughs> Sink me if you don't think I'm your own ghost. Jock! Touches! Touches! You're rock? Oh, I'm afraid it'll be at least an hour before he comes back on duty. We had to hit him rather hard. Nice fellow, but no good at all with his derbies. Seize him! <laughs> <laughs> Allow me to present you, Chauvelin. This is my firing party. Up! You shall not escape. Surround the mount! Surround the mount! The whole mount! You cannot escape, Sir Percy. The whole mount is surrounded. And with the best regiment in France. Parisian. You cannot escape. Parisians? City chaps? Oh, poor fellows, they won't have a chance. Chauvelin, call them off quick. It's almost 10 o'clock. France will need those men. No more your jokes, Sir Percy. Your ship is a mile away across the sands. You cannot get to your ship. You always know best, Chauvelin. Lucky people, you politicians. Well, we really must be leaving. Any casualties? Buddy, oh, oh, right, 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 right. All aboard, then. Buddy, stop! Right, stop! Quick, march! We never load them. Goodbye, Chauvelin. And don't bother to see me to my ship. Because, you see, I have it all arranged. My ship will come to me. Keep away, forward! Send the helms for the aft! Man in the chains! Ah, there you are. Allow me. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present the shortly to be discredited agent of the French Republic to the Court of St. James. The Baron de Broncard, the Baroness de Broncard. La Duchesse Lavrière and her two grandchildren. Monsieur le Marquis de Gachet. Monsieur le Marquis de Montrichard. The Comte de Tournay de Basser, even. Oh, this lady you know. Marguerite? Yes, Percy. You remember Mr. Chauvelin? Of course. But the whole mount is surrounded. You can see from the ramparts. You cannot escape. But the whole mount. I'm afraid you won't have time to look, my dear. We have to leave. We give a ball on Monday, you know. We have so much to do. But the... Goodbye, Mr. Chauvelin. But don't take it too much to heart. You will have the consolation of knowing that you held the Scarlet Pimpernel in your hand. Chauvelin said that you would be free the moment that I die, and not a moment sooner. <laughs>